open the door, come on in. It puts us in a degraded state if we have unresolved desire, unsatisfiable desire. It can put us in a negative state and it can make us think something has value that has no real intrinsic value. It only has value to our perception. Without our perception, it has no value. As I could argue, the existence of the human race has no more value than the existence of the non-existent Martians and the non-existent Phoenicians and the non-existent Munikins and the non-existent Mercuryites. None of these things have any value outside of perception. So without our perception, our own perception of the value, there is no value, okay? There's no intrinsic value in our existence. There's intrinsic value in our welfare. So again, this turns on your next comment, which basically you just totally butchered an easy argument that it's better, it's, it's better to go bar hopping than holocausting. And you turn that into whether it's all right to commit murder. The Holocaust isn't about murder. The Holocaust is about incarcerating, torturing in the most brutal, harsh manner possible, slowly starving people to death in the most miserable conditions you could put a human being in. So we're not talking about murder, some kind of exist, not exist, which is totally a projection of value. There's no intrinsic value in our survival. There's only intrinsic value in the welfare we possess why we exist. When I'm dead, I'm no longer value relevant. Okay, so talking about murder is breaking the value equation as it relates to holocausting. Holocausting means creating incredible suffering the most horrid kind of suffering you can possibly imagine personally experiencing versus the most enjoyable kind of behavior or activity which is chasing pussy and such. Now these two experiences, getting some and having nothing, are two dramatically different qualitative feeling states and for you to argue that it's somehow ambiguous, or uncertain, or confusing, or subject to a claim by some person, some rational, logical claim they could make, explaining how in and of itself it would be better to have a million people holocausting than bar hopping, is ludicrous. So stick to the example as it's given. Don't pervert it by doing something stupid like saying holocausting means snapping your fingers and people disappear. Because frankly, that's in my opinion, not a crime. If you can snap your fingers and things disappear, you can't really do much harm that way. You're talking about analyzing you know, a system and talking about using the words positive and negative in terms of... Um, Okay, so I was talking about the fact that in nature we can see the mechanism of repulsion and attraction. The mechanism has a fundamental function. It is decidedly different. One is to keep something away which is essentially fundamentally negative. It has to create a negative circumstance for the awayness to take place. This negative repulsive force, it has to be decidedly obnoxious just by its nature, because it has to force things apart. Repulsiveness and attractiveness, I really don't have any problem with that. I mean, if, if you're not talking about it in any moral terms. Outside of a god, there is no edict, okay? But what is obvious in the argument here is that this idea that there is something fundamental in this mechanism that creates this idea of value, and that it's not something you just make up. It's something relevant relative to the idea of the sentient and its capacity to be put in a degraded qualitative state. You're just using the words positive and negative in physical, in, in, a, in a physical uh, manner, then okay, but what you were saying before was that uh, well, the physical manifest as a physiological experience for consciousness. Again, just, okay, deny the existence of consciousness. Go ahead. I can't stop you. I'm saying that's illogical. It's nonsensical. We personally experience, so there's just no point in saying it doesn't exist, in my opinion. That is just plain ludicrous. The fact that our consciousness creates a state inside of us 
that we react to intellectually to try to resolve. It creates positive and negative right in front of us. The whip and the carrot right in front of us. It is created right in front of us. And to deny that the whip is bad and the carrot is good is insipid.